You got company, Michael. What kind? Family company. I'll be there in a minute. Scott? Hey, Mikey! <laughs> How long has it been? <laughs> ah, must be three years. Three years. Eleanor, have you met Scott? Yeah, we've been chatting. And I'm impressed. Your own administrator, Michael? Yeah, well, there's a lot to administer. <laughs> Uncle Mike, think fast! Neil, no throwing footballs in Michael's house. Neil? That's... Come here, let me get a better look. You little... Oh. <laughs> Can't get me, Uncle Mike! <laughs> well, you three men bond, and I'll go see if Blair needs anything. Blair came, too. Great. Yeah, she's very nice. Why, thank you. Hello, Michael. Blair? Let's go check out the horses. Why not? I just want to chat with your Uncle Michael for a moment. Maybe Eleanor can give you the tour. Of, of course. The tour. It's all part of the show. Allison says hi. Does she? You can't stand me because I left your sister. I know that. So, what are you doing here? I came because I'm worried about Neil. And since you two were so close, my feelings aside, I trust that you're an expert on these things. Um, what's the problem? I don't know. I only know that there is something wrong. But I don't want Scott to think that I'm doing this behind his back. He thinks that we're just visiting. He insists that Neil's just showing the strains of growing up. I'm not too sure. I suppose what I'm really asking for is your help. Well, you know I'll do anything for Neil. I know you would. Oh, and that one's Steel. He's a stallion. Stallion? She means he's a boy. <laughs> so what do you think, Neil? I think this place is cool. Thanks, man. So do I. <laughs> do you think maybe I could ride one of the horses? Your mom and I were just talking about that. How would you like to spend the weekend? We can go on an overnight fishing trip, and your parents can pick you up on Sunday. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Neil and I had a lot of plans for this weekend. A stupid baseball game. A stupid what? Why, I... Uh, I... No, I think it's a good idea, Scott. <laughs> well, so do I. Especially if I get to go along. Why not? Just the guys. All right. Uh, Eleanor, you wouldn't mind covering for me, would you? Keeping in mind that this one single overnight represents my entire summer vacation. <laughs> it's important. Well, then, sure. I'm sure the kids and I can occupy ourselves while uh, you men hunt. <laughs> I'll pick you up Sunday. Great. What do you say, sport? Great. Great. I can't wait till we get there. I've never gone fishing before. Sure you have. What about that boat trip we took up north? Oh, yeah. I remember. Yeah. You probably forgot because we didn't catch any fish. Well, where we're going, you're guaranteed to catch fish, but you got to swear not to tell us all. I promise. Oh, no. You have to swear. 
Okay, I swear. Give it a shot, Neil. <laughs> Whoa. Fishing with Zorro. <laughs> you gotta relax a bit, man. <laughs> Put more wrist into it. Use your arm. Yeah, keep your arm. No! Let me go. I want to do it myself. Whoa. Have it your own way, pal. Just trying to help. Better relax just a bit, Neil. Cooking. This is fun, huh? Yeah. Yeah? That's it? Just yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm having the best time of my life, Uncle Mike. Yeah. I'm a real happy camper. <laughs> oh. Remember the time you took me on that roller coaster? And then Allison had to wait below because she was too scared to go. <laughs> Check the memory on this guy. I don't even remember that. Oh. I remember all the things we used to do together. I used to pretend you were my dad. Yeah. Yeah, that used to make me feel good. But Scott's your dad now. I know. You guys still buds? Yeah. Getting along with your mom? Yeah. She yells at me sometimes when I do stuff. Well, moms do that. I know my mom sure did. Yeah. You know, sometimes there's stuff that you feel that you just can't talk to your mom or your dad about. Uncle Mike. Hey, you in the big top. How's this? That's a good start, but we'll need a big bed of coals for those fish. Neil, why don't you go see if you can scrounge up a little more, huh? Don't go too far off, huh? I know. God, I've missed that kid. Yeah, guess you would. <coughs> He's growing like a weed, huh? Yeah, so did I when I was his age. Not that that's a reason for him to take after me, not being his natural father. Takes after his mother, really. Yeah, yeah. I guess you'd hope he doesn't take after her. Matter of fact, I was surprised as hell when she suggested we come out here. I thought you two hated each other. No, oh, uh, we don't hate hate. But I will admit I was surprised to see you guys. You mind if I ask what you two were talking about back at the house? Uh, Blair is worried about Neil. Really? Yeah. What about? She doesn't know. Oh. Funny thing is, I've been worried too. I think Neil's become quite a little liar. Now he tells lies? No, he's telling stories. He's acting up at school, lying outright about the stupidest things. I'm stymied. Well, sometimes kids make up stories just just protect their privacy. I forget that's your particular line of expertise. How are you and Blair getting along? Well, you think... Oh, no, we're fine. At least I think we are. Because, you know, kids can pick up on any kind of problem that their parents might be having. Blair and I get along as well as we ever have. So, so do Neil and I. I wouldn't have even brought up the lying thing if we hadn't been talking about him. When I was his age, I used to tell a few tales myself. 
Didn't everybody? Anything happen here I should know about? Just the explosion. Kidding. Hope you got enough fish for everybody. It's all we got on the uh, menu tonight. Greg, we didn't catch a darn thing. Kidding. <laughs> we got a cooler for it. You got me. You did. Oh, yeah, Mr. Hernicke called. He said the pressure relief valve is fused, but he's willing to rent us either diving gear and a torch or his antique fire truck to pump it out. Is he serious? Mr. Hernicke doesn't kid. Problem? No, uh, the pool's clogged. Uncle Mike, do we have to go home now? Let's see what your mother says. Morris, this cooler is pretty heavy. I think Neil better give you a hand with it. You're not thinking of letting Neil stay, are you? Well, it is something I wanted to talk to you and Blair about, yeah. Oh, how was the trip? Best fishing trip I've been on in ages. Neil's quite a woodsman. Yeah, he sure is. Well, tomorrow's a work day. We better hit the road. Uh, I was going to suggest that maybe Neil should stay here for a few days. Do you really think it's necessary? Whoa. What's the problem? I'm asking Michael. Well, he does have a few things bottled up inside. I don't know if he wants to talk about it or if he just needs to blow off some of the frustration that goes along with puberty, but... I think it would be a good idea if you stayed for a while. Blair, where's this coming from? You never told me you were worried about Neil. Yeah, well, I am concerned. Blair, if Neil wants to talk to somebody, I don't see why he can't talk to us. <laughs> I don't want to suddenly turn a nice visit into an interrogation. <laughs> I don't work that way. I'm not going to corner him. And this ranch was designed to help kids open up. Besides, there are some things that kids just don't want to talk to their parents about. Just for a few days, Scott. Okay, you're his mother. Good. Okay, now, the only other thing I should tell you, other than the list of things Blair told you, is that he would live on chocolate cake if given the choice. Well, you'll be happy to know that we can't afford chocolate cake around here very often. <laughs> I know, I know. He'll be fine. Yes. What? You know what I mean. Okay. Good. Because if you cause any trouble, it'll be trouble for all of us. TV and drink. I work hard all day. So do I. All you do is take care of two stinking kids. You try it. I'm sick of this, and I'm sick of you. Great. Go out and get drunk again. You won't be sleeping in my bed tonight, I'll tell you that. Who wants to? Not me. Not in a million years, that's for sure. Stay in character, Peggy Jean. I was staying in character. I want to divorce the guy. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, everybody I know gets divorced. Yes. That's enough for tonight. <laughs> All right, everybody, you can watch the movie I rented. You all right? Don't. You know, sometimes when we play these uh, role-playing games, the people watching get more upset than the people playing. I'm not upset. You could have fooled me. I'm not. They were pretending they were mom and dad arguing. They were talking about getting a divorce. 
Does that word scare you? Yeah. Why? You're afraid that Scott and your mom might stop loving each other, get divorced? That's what's going to happen. Why? Because. Because why? That's what he said would happen if I stopped letting him touch me. Scott. Yes. I don't want him anymore. Please make him stop. I want him to stop. I want you to know that I believe you, and I'm glad you told me. When did it start? Right after Mom married him. Right at the beginning? And you'd never told anybody? I was scared. That he'd hurt you? No. He said we wouldn't be a family anymore, and that they'd take me away from him and Mom. He's usually nice. It's only sometimes. I'm not going to let him anymore. I'm afraid it might not be that easy, Neil. It will. I'll just tell him. You sure it wouldn't be better if I told him? No, you can't. Please, Uncle Mike, you got to swear. What he did is wrong. It's got to stop. Shh. You want to talk some more? We can go over to the house. No, don't say anything. Movie over already? The scene in it. <laughs> Everybody okay in here? Yeah. I'll go to bed. Michael, I know I'm not an expert on life in the country, but where I come from, we don't usually light fires when it's already sweltering outside. That helps me think. But you're right, it is getting pretty hot in here. I'll let it die. Is it Neil? I said I don't want to talk about it. Oh. I guess it wouldn't be very professional. But I have to. I have to say it out loud. You're making me nervous. Neil is being abused sexually by his stepfather. What? going on for six years and I didn't have a clue what the hell was happening. He had to come out and say it. Even when we were camping, he... Are you sure? Yeah. And Scott tried to tell me that Neil's been making up stories. Well, maybe he has. No, he's telling the truth. How do you know? I can tell. I can see the pain. Because I think that Scott was trying to set me up so I wouldn't believe a word that Neil said. Well, then you gotta do something about it. I have to report it. I have to start an investigation rolling that's gonna end up sending Scott to prison for years. You don't feel sorry for him, do you? No, but no matter what I do from this point on, I'll be betraying Neil's trust, breaking up his family. It's a sick family. And that's the thing that Neil's afraid of the most because Scott's the only father he's ever known. So 
So Neil still loves Scott. But he's going to hate somebody. You. Michael, if you suspect abuse is taking place, you have to call the police. It's your responsibility and it's the law. We place a restraining order on him. But well, maybe I can talk him into going in himself. You have to play by the rules on this. We have to investigate on the suspicion. I know, I know. But Neil is at my ranch now, so he's safe. What I need to know is how long from when you make the phone call till we knock on the door. What, an hour? Two hours? Maybe later tonight? Well, it has to be within 24 hours. So, tomorrow morning. Early tomorrow morning. Well, I ran a check on your mysterious Mr. Scott Markham. Are you sure the background's accurate? As far as I know. Why? Have you got something? Exactly the opposite. Scott Markham doesn't exist. What are you talking about? I followed him through the professional criminal files until sometime before he married your sister-in-law. The man was non-existent. Unless he changed his name. His prior ID is classified. That narrows the search down. I got Marlene on the computer. I'm trying to get that now. Okay. Let me know if you find anything. Michael, you don't have to follow this through personally. You've already blown the whistle. You can step back if you want. No, I can't. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, Mrs. Cassidy. Michael! What are you doing here? Blair's going out to the ranch today. Is Neil all right? Can we go somewhere private and talk? Hey, anything you want to say, you can say in front of Arthur, here. Yeah? He told me, Scott. <laughs> told you what? Arthur, go somewhere and clean out a cage. What the hell are you doing ordering my employees around, Michael? You're right. Why I'm concerned about sparing your humiliation is beyond me. Look, Michael, I'm really busy. He told me, Sky, that you've been abusing him, sexually abusing him since he was six years old. I don't know what's keeping me from smashing you in the face for that. I do. You believe him? <laughs> Michael, this is me. Forget about the fact that I told you he makes up lies. Forget about the fact I'm an adult. He's just a kid. I can't forget that. I don't believe this. People like that really make me sick, too. Don't you understand that? You don't even believe it yourself. <laughs> I swear, Michael, if you did, you'd be at my throat. You'd kill me. I know you. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up, or I swear to God, I'll... You can call the police. You can call social services. Ask them what to do. Either way, I'll give you that much. But it's got to be done today. Now. Why? Why are you doing this? Don't pretend to be the victim. I don't understand. Why do I have to wait for Michael before I can see my son? I'm just passing on what he told me. 
He called and he said he was on his way back. In fact, he should be here any minute. Yeah, but Neil is here on the ranch. Right now he's with the other kids and they're doing chores. on. Where's Neil? You're early. I wanted to be here when you got here. Yeah, I heard that part. Where's Neil? You wanted me to find out what's bothering him. I found out. What? What's bothering him? It's Scott. He's been abusing him. Sexually. Neil told me. It's a lie. It's been going on since you got married. You should see me rise. Neil, come here. I have to ask you something. No, Blair. Did you tell Michael that Scott's been hurting you? No. Get in the car. Blair. I'm taking him. You have no legal ground to keep him here. You can't run away from this. Well, the point is, Michael Neal isn't at the ranch anymore. I thought I could convince her. Well, the issue now is safety. In your professional opinion, do you think Neal is in a dangerous situation? Well, no. I think she'll watch him like a hawk tonight. Well, if you don't think Neil's in any immediate danger, then we'll proceed as planned. I'll see you tomorrow morning. I'll be there. So, you're still going on with the investigation? We're going ahead. Even though Neil's changed his story? Nothing has changed. I still have to act on what he told me. But if he didn't want you to act, then why did he tell you in the first place? Because he's 12 years old. He believes in secrets. The only help he was asking for was to share the secret with him and to help carry the weight of it. I blew it, Eleanor. I went about this all wrong. I thought I could handle it. I thought I could convince Blair. God, I hate the thought of him in that house. I know. Hi, honey. You're home late. Well, I had a lot of customers. Then I had to pick up your favorite ice cream at the market. Where's Neil? Did you go pick him up? Yes, I did. Where is he? Why? I want to talk to him, see if he had a good time at the ranch. He didn't have a very good time. He's tired. It's going to be another hot night. I think Neil and I will sleep on the couches downstairs. Fine, but... I don't want you to wake him. Blair, what's happening here? I don't know, Scott. I know that sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and you say you're not tired or that you want to read. But I hear voices talking in whispers so that I can't hear them. And I, I always think that I'm, I'm imagining those voices. And so I close my eyes tight until I fall back to sleep again. And sometimes I keep hearing.
Hello? Michael, I hope you know and appreciate that I stayed late at work just to tell you this. Yeah, I do. What do you got? Scott Markham's a man with a history after all. Turns out his real name is Leonard Stafford. And what do we know about Leonard Stafford? His name was changed to protect his identity when he was taken away from his home by the social services. Scott was an abused kid, Michael. He spent the rest of his childhood in foster homes. Most of those places were worse than the home he was taken from in the first place. Oh my God. He never had a mother to speak of, and his father was an alcoholic. I get the picture. Thanks, man. For what it's worth. Morning, family. Thanks for the toast. So, cool enough for you downstairs? I'll get it. What is this? Scott William Markham? Yes. Also known as Leonard Stafford. What the hell is all this about? Who's Leonard Stafford? You're being investigated under provincial criminal code on the charge of sexual assault of a minor. What? Dad, what's happening? Let me go down to the station. Michael, what are you doing? You're ordered to leave the premises immediately and refrain from all contact with your stepson until a full investigation of the charges against you has been completed. Leave? This is my house! I'm with Provincial Social Services. This is a court order restricting you from having any contact with Neil. I'll tell you where you can stick your court order. Get off of me! Don't push your luck, Mr. Martin. Why are you arresting him? Now you're hurting him! He's not under arrest. He's just not allowed near Neil. I lied! Nothing ever happened! Let him go! Neil, stop it! Don't say anything else! Let's go! to do it, Michael. I know. Now I have to go see Scott. I'll drop you off. Michael, don't get involved. He needs help as much as Neil does. <laughs> Scott! <laughs> You're a real bloodsucker, you know that? I know that you're as much a victim as Neil is. I found out about your father. You don't know anything about my father or me. You think I wanted to hurt Neil? You just crusade in and crusade out and all around you, Michael, are the broken pieces. It had to stop. It did. But it doesn't have to end. People can rebuild their lives. I'll see what I can do about it. If you want me to forgive you, I forgive you. I even thank you for saving Neil from me. But leave. Now. Please leave me alone.
pretend to be the Was it? Blair came and a few other people. I wish she would have let me take a kneel. Well, I can understand why mother wouldn't want her son to attend the funeral of the man who abused him. Yeah. Where is everybody? They're swimming. So you think Neil should have gone, huh? Well, I asked him, but he doesn't seem to hear me. He's been here three days. The only person he'll talk to is Morris. That's a start, isn't it? Barely. Hi, guys. Hey, Michael. <laughs> hey, Michael. I think we found the problem. Can you fix it without replacing the valve? Yeah, but we're going to need a plunger about this big. Neil did find but a fox's purse at the bottom. Speaking of Fox, I haven't seen her around. Is she down there, too? I don't know. You see Fox? Uh, I, have you seen her, man? <laughs> we'll go check. You're a pretty good swimmer, Neil. Michael, maybe he shouldn't even be at the ranch. I promised Blair I'd try and help. Well, he opened up once. Just have to figure out how to do it again. Yeah. And soon. Hey, there's my buddy. How you doing? Uh, see you guys later, right? It's not a prison, you know. Despite what you think, you don't have to coop yourself up. My dad killed himself. It was my fault, so they sent me here. How can it be your fault if he killed himself? My mom sent me here. She knows it's my fault. That's not true. That's nuts. Maybe she just wants Michael to help you out. He can't. You gotta let him, Neil. Guys, Michael wants everybody at the ranch house. Pronto. Come on, I'll walk with you. Why can't I get mad back? Because I said so. That doesn't mean anything. You want to smack, huh? You listen to me. I'm your father, and I don't need a reason. I can't do it. I can't even say it. Why not? Because I sound like my dad when I say stuff like that. And I hate it. You sound like my dad. That's the thing with parents. You swear you're never going to end up like them, and, and then, like Morris says, he's never going to say, because I said so. And why? Because I said so. Because we don't have to repeat our parents' mistakes. That's what this role-playing game is all about. We get to stand in the other person's shoes just for a little while. Okay, who's next? I'll go again. Okay, but you need a new partner. Neil, how about you? No. Oh, come on, buddy. There's a lot of stuff bottled up inside you. And we won't laugh at you, right, people? We're not going to laugh. Yeah, right. Nope. We're with you, buddy. That's my man. Okay, now you just be yourself and say whatever you want to say. 
and uh, you be Scott. Really? Yeah, really. Whenever you're ready. Hey, Neil. You want to hit me? No. You can. Go ahead. I don't want to. It'll make you feel better. You're angry at me, right? Come on. No. Hey, Morris. Just let Neil say what he's got to say. I don't have anything to say. Yeah, well, maybe you do. What would Scott say? I don't know. Well, try it. Mix it up. Why don't uh, you be Scott? You shouldn't have hurt me. I didn't. Yes, you did. You deserved it, man. I'm glad you drove off that cliff. I don't want to do this. For what you did to me, I hope you rot in hell. Stop it. Neil. Neil, it's okay. Neil. I didn't want to do that. It's OK, Morris. You did exactly what I was hoping you'd do. <sighs> Neil. Get away from me. I said get away. You sound pretty mad. I am. And who are you mad at? Scott? No, I killed him. Scott killed himself. And you know why? Because I told your secret. You got no reason to be mad at yourself. I told the truth, and Scott couldn't deal with it. No. Yes. It's my fault, it is. He'd be alive today if it weren't for me. If I hadn't said anything, this wouldn't have happened. It's my fault. Scott chose to take his own life. Blame him. Blame me if you have to. I'm the one that told. I'm the one that turned him in. But don't blame yourself. I'm going to phone your mom, Neil. I think it's time you went home. to leave yeah I know he blames you for all of this well that's better than blaming himself he's got a long way to go but the therapist I recommended can help you both well maybe if he realizes you were only trying to help If not, take good care of him for me. <laughs> <laughs> 